I'm going to go over the DOK demonstration of knowledge that uh, we did yesterday, Wednesday, and um, I'm, I'm going to need to read it from the book. So I gave you an option of doing between uh, number 22 and 23 on page 120. And so those of you that you know weren't quite as confident, uh, I expected you to do 22. Those of you that I know are stronger and desire more of a challenge, I expected you to do 23. But I, you know, I, you got the same points regardless. So I'm going to do 22 first, and just do it so I can, uh, you guys can see how I would have done it, and you know, to pay particular attention to formatting and that type of stuff. So I have to read this from the book. Let's see. One metric ton is approximately 2,205 pounds. Write a program that prompts the user to input the amount of rice in pounds a bag can hold. Okay. The program outputs the number of bags needed to store one metric ton of rice. Okay, I'll have to keep that in hand because well, I'm not sure if I'll keep it straight. But it sounds pretty straightforward. Um, how, how many bags in a metric ton sort of thing. So the first thing that is clear to me is that we have a constant here. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, and write the constant because the constant is going to be an integer and it's going to be pounds in metric pounds per metric ton pounds in a metric ton. And the book tells us that number is twenty two oh five. Okay, so I wrote the constant and it's going to be a data type integer since that's the number they gave us was a whole integer. And um, I just called mine mine pounds per metric ton because the book says uh, one metric ton is approximately 2,205 pounds. So another way of seeing that is to say uh, pounds per metric ton is 2,205. So that's a that's the constant that I'm going to use. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're, we need to prompt the user for an input. So let's uh, do the input. Uh, so I'm the number of bags. All right, so let's do that. I added the amount of rice because that's the uh, that's what we're looking for from the user. So we needed to declare a variable. So I'd state a type int. Um, we're just going to say how much rice um, are they going to enter. And here um, we're prompting the user. So we're writing to the console, enter the amount of rice in pounds in a bag. I believe that's how it says that. Let's see. Yeah, in pounds in a bag of rice. Okay, so um, they're going to enter the amount, and that amount will be assigned to the variable amount of rice, and then we uh, end the console. I did go ahead and, and add in the return zero just so we can satisfy the return of int for this uh, for this function. And the next thing we need to do is we need to do um, what our calculation, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So I went ahead and uh, I had to declare a second variable, also going to be int number of bags. And I uh, set number of bags. It's going to be assigned the division of pounds per metric ton, uh, the, con the constant up here, and divided by the amount of rice that the user entered. And it really is that simple. And uh, let's see. So it's really, I know I might throw a little bit of commenting. This isn't necessary for these smaller programs, but uh, I think for doing your, for doing these assignments, I think it's a, I think it's a good thing to, uh, I don't know, just to kind of get used to doing these. So here I would go ahead and say, um, I would say, I can just put input and user input. A lot of times I'll put user input and here I uh, just would put uh, process or calculation, whatever you want. And the next thing of course is going to be our, um, our output. Now you don't have to put those in there. I just, the only reason I'm putting them in there is so that the, the students that need a little extra help with uh, how to diagram this. Uh, hopefully it helps them to, to understand what's going on in each step. 
Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to output this stuff and say, okay, well, we have all this stuff. Now let's, uh, let's send information to the console. And here you can see that I've created the output uh, console out. And I went ahead and put uh, some information to the user, number of bags needed to fill a metric ton of rice. And then I just pass it uh, the amount that, uh, well, the what we calculated in the process. Uh, and that's it. I mean, it really is a very, very simple problem. Uh, literally a five minute type of problem uh, if you had to think about it maybe 10 or 15 minutes uh, but um, not terribly challenging uh, still I think it's a good one that just kind of lays out the use of a constant I really wanted to see everyone use a constant for this variable right here because it, that's what it was and uh, I wanted people to to do the calculation here now you'll see some programmers will do this calculation right over here in the console I'm not a fan of that and I'll tell you why because as you write more complex programs, a lot of times what you your output is going to go to multiple places. It might go to a text file, into a database, and it's a lot easier if you have everything in one variable that you're passing to multiple uh, outputs versus just to the console. In real, it, usually you're not just sending uh, an answer straight to the console. It's going to, to multiple places. All right, so let's go ahead and compile this. So I haven't tested it, so hopefully it runs. Let's find out. Okay, console came up. That's good. Enter the amount of rice in the bag. And I'm just going to make up some numbers because I have no idea. Um, it says the number of bags needed to fill a ton of rice is eight. I have no idea if the math is right. Um, leave it up to you guys to check that out. But, uh, I mean, the, the point is, is that you learned how to, how to format. You learned how to take in the information, how to lay it out. And uh, that's really it. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do the next one, which is problem number 23. I think that was a little bit more complicated. Okay, so now we're ready to start um, exercise uh, number 23. I'll go ahead and read that one. Cindy uses the services of a brokerage firm to buy and sell stocks. Cool. The firm charges 1.5%. Hmm. We have a fixed number. What do you think that is? Probably a constant. Uh, on total amounts for each transaction, buy or sell, okay, so the transactions matter. When Cindy sells stocks, she would like to know if she gained or lost on a particular investment. Write a program that allows Cindy to input the number of shares sold, the purchase price of each share, and the selling price of each share. The program outputs the amount invested, the total service charges, and the amount gained or lost, and the amount received after selling the stock. Okay, so a little bit more going on there, but I mean, still not terribly challenging, simple arithmetic, and a few outputs. And my, I have to stop because my dog is uh, scratching at my door. Uh, so I'll continue here in a moment. I do have the skeleton laid out. Um, of course, I already have a syntax here. Better put that semicolon in. Um, we could go ahead and throw in our constant. Um, okay, I, I got to deal with my dog, and then we're going to get to work. Okay, so the easiest thing to do was to go ahead and throw our service charges in there. Um, and I just went ahead and tossed those in. Um, I don't know. I, I think that's good enough. It's um, So once we have that, now we can take a look at uh, what else we're going to do here. All right. So you, you can tell from our reading, we're going to need all these variables. And so I went ahead and organized them in a way that makes sense. Um, we have the data type double for almost all of them except for the share sold since you can, you know, with this scenario we can only sell whole sh uh, whole shares. And so um, we have our buy and our sell price for stocks. And so that they're going to go in one on one line. You could combine all these, but I, I thought uh, organizing them in this manner, it's easy to see what's going on. So uh, the purchase price uh, on line 14, you have your purchase price and your sell price. And then on line 15, you have your, your service charge and your services, uh, your service charges to sell. So buy and sell. And uh, so they're organized in a way that makes sense. Um, and then we have our share sold. One thing I want you to notice is that all of the variables are named so that they're self-documenting. So if you see the variable, you can see what it means. You don't, you, therefore, you don't have to write a comment above it. To, to tell uh, to tell the user what's going on um, it's 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 clear what's going to happen so now we need to get some information from our from the uh, from the user 
Okay, so I've added on lines 18 through 28 the information that we need to collect from the user according to the book. It says to ask for these items. Uh, the input number of shares sold, the purchase price, and the selling price. So, pretty simple. We did exactly that. We say, okay, what's the buy price of each share? And we assign it to the variable stock buy price per share. We want we prompt the user for the sell price of each share. And we assign it to the variable stock sell price per share. And the same for shares sold. So, still so far very straightforward right from the book. Uh, no, nothing complex yet. But now we have to worry about our, uh, our formula. So now we're going to do the process side. Okay, so the first set of formulas are right from the book. Also, we're told that the firm charges 1.5% service charge on the total amount for each transaction buy or sell. So taking that logic into account, we can easily write uh, our next, our two uh, service charges. So here we're going to say, the service charge for a buy and the service charge for a sell is going to be equal to the service price per share, what they entered here, times the shares sold, so how many shares they sold, because the total price, remember, and then multiply by the service charges, which uh, up here was the, uh, the 15%. So really that, that's just uh, straight up uh, basic arithmetic. We're taking the, 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 the uh, excuse me, the buy price of each, each, each share, the number of shares that we sold, that were sold, and then that times the service charge. Because according to the book, the, the question, it's 1.5% the service charge on the total amount. So that would be this right here. That's how we calculate that. And that's going to be the service charge for a buy. Well, we also want to calculate a service charge for a sell. It's exactly the same thing with the only difference being that here we're looking at the sale price per share. And so that's really it. Uh, Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. So the next thing we need to do is calculate uh, what the actual um, what the actual output is going to be. So now, um, and actually, you know, right here under this process, I probably now I'm only doing this uh, to help uh, you students understand uh, the differences in our comedy. So here I'm going to go ahead and just say this is our service charges. So that way you know what's going on there. Normally you wouldn't you wouldn't do this level of commenting, but I think for our little assignments, I think this is fine. And uh, we'll we'll do the next part. Okay, so now we've got to calculate our stock purchase price and our stock sell price on lines 37 and lines 38. And so from there, all we need to do is is calculate what the service charges are because we needed to know what the service charges are that we calculated up above, so that we can add or subtract those from the uh, the actual uh, purchase and sale price. So in the purchase price, we take the stock buy price, we multiply by the shares sold, add on the service charges by, the service, service charges, and we're good. Now for a sale, the, um, it's basically the same thing except for we're going to use the sale price here and then subtract the service charges sell. And that should be it. Um, now it's just a matter of, let's see, amount gained or lost. Yeah, we need to do that part. So one more little formula. Okay, so it dawned on me I was missing a couple of variables. I needed to calculate total service charges by and amount gained or lost. And uh, we, we hadn't done that part yet. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, create these variables right here. And because the very next thing we need to do is calculate the total service charges for a buy. And so here we're, we're taking the service charges buy that we calculated right up in here, and we're going to add it to the service charges sell right here. And remember, this is for our, for our full transactions to see what's going to happen. Now, the next thing that I need to do is I need to calculate the amount gained or lost. Um, and then we, then we have to do a whole bunch of outputs, but one more formula and then we're done with our process. Okay, so on line 43, I added the amount gained or lost, which is really simple. All we're doing is taking the stock sale price and subtracting the stock purchase price. And that's it. So we, we've, we've completed all of our math. 
I, I believe I've explained all of it, how we did, how we got through all of it. Um, I added these two new variables that I for, had forgotten, and they're here now. And so all the processes are done, and now we we're actually ready to start doing our outputs. So the first thing I had to do was I had to change one of my variable names, and uh, that was because it, it didn't make sense the way I had written it. So I changed this one right here, total services, total service charges. It had been total service charges by, but that didn't make sense because I'm actually looking for just the total service charges. And that's why I have the buy plus the sell. So back up here, I had to change it to, from total service charges by to total service charges. And then here I used total service charges on line 42 equal to total, total service charges by plus the total charges sell. And uh, because remember, they don't care whether you buy or sell. They're charging you for, for either one. It doesn't really matter. And then the amount gained uh, or lost was simply the stock sell price minus the stock purchase price. It's really that simple. Okay, so once we have this information, now we can output it. So the total amount invested was simply the total, total uh, the stock purchase price. The total amount received was simply the stock sell price. The total service charges, well, that's the total service charges that we calculated right here. And then the amount gained or lost was simply the stock sell price minus the stock purchase price right here. And that is it. So I'll leave it to you to double check the math that I think it's correct. Um, again, the exact perfect equations are not what's important. What is important is the process that we laid out. So our, imp, our declaring this constant variable right up in here on line 9, declaring our, our variables in a way that makes sense and is, is nice and uh, laid out, formatted properly. Um, our inputs, nice and neat, and, and each input um, is assigned to a variable that was declared up above. Our process, our calculations, all done nice and neat and labeled so that we know what's going on in our calculations and uh, our outputs. Again, nice and neatly laid out so it's, you can easily see what's going on. Anybody could uh, take over this code and uh, modify it because it's, it's well documented. The variables are self-documented and uh, just easy wheezy. Okay, so I'll go ahead and need a five on this. Hopefully it compiles. I haven't actually done that yet, so let's find out what happens. I'm gonna do the build start. Build succeeded, that's a good sign. Okay, uh, buy price of each share, let's say it was uh, $25. Sell price of each share, let's say we made money, uh, let's say it went for 50 bucks. Number of shares sold, um, I sold 10. There you go. Total amount invested was $253. Total amount received, total service charges, and the amount gained or lost. There you go. I think that was great. Uh, worked out nice and neat and clean. I'll go ahead and, and pass through the code one more time. So our variables are constant on line 9. Our variables on lines 13 through 16 or 18. Our inputs, our process, our formulas on lines 33 through line 43. And our output, nice and neat. Okay, well, that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you missed the DOK, I apologize. They cannot be made up. They're the kind of things that show up, I don't know, every, every, every once in a while after two or three chapters, and, uh, and they're with points. Have a good day. Happy coding.